In the last lecture, we learned how to create a GET API, and this GET API will execute the find command on the student model, which has which refers to the collection student infos. This find command will fetch all the data from the collection and then return the result. And this result will be sent back to the client using the response dot send method. So when it our objective is that when this result returns back we have to display it. If we click on the route manage student, then a component manage student should, uh, should render and that component should get the data from the API and display it like this in the tabular format. So here I have manage student component and this is the minimum code that any component has. So constant name of the component manage student, which is same as the name of the file. And then we have an arrow function and in this we have a return function and right now it just returns manage student so if, if i just see this output of this right now if i click on manage student the manage student component is just displaying the heading so in this component we have to display the data which we get from the get api and display it in the tabular format so let's go back to our component and start coding here so since I have to display data, use the bootstrap for styling. So I will import the bootstrap, bootstrap slash disk slash CSS slash bootstrap dot min dot CSS. Since I have to get the uh, data from the get API and for posting data, for getting data, uh, for deleting data, for updating data, we use the XCS package. So I will import the XCS package import xcs from we'll also be using the use state hooks and the use effect hook import so use state hook you have already used and we will use a new hook called use from react so i will show you what is the use of this use effect hook so now inside the component before the return so i will create some use state array before we learn to create use state variable so just like we create use state variable, we can also use use state array where we can store the list of values. So I will declare a use array. Let me call it list of students because in this I will be uh, this is this will be a list which will store the list of students. And I will create use state function or method. So I just put before this name of the list. I will put set before that. So set list of students equal to I will use use state and in this we give the initial value of a variable or an array so in this case since we have an array so I want to initialize with an empty array so I must put the square brackets here to denote that in the beginning this list is empty this array is empty now in the next line I will create the use effect hook one of the uses of this use effect hook is to execute some code when the component renders so what i want is that when this component manage student renders it should immediately uh, connect to the get api get the data from the api and fill that data in the use state array list of students so use state use effect so it has a callback function and inside this i will write here i will write the code which I have to execute. So again to get data from the get API I will use the XCS package XCS dot get. So I will try to get something from the get API. If I am able to get it then I will execute the code in the then method. If I am not able to get that data because of any reason then I will use the catch method. So in the get method I will just keep them in the separate lines just for clarity. So the if argument of the get method is the uh, URL of the API from where I want to get this data of students. So the URL for that is HTTP localhost port number is specified in the beginning that port number will be 3001. So the server will listen on port 3001 and the path or the route we decided in the API we specified if you see in the index.js in the last class we decided to give this route as manage okay you can give any name I just give the manage so I can just copy from here to avoid any spelling mismatch and I will just put here 
So this route specifies the API and this API will return the result after getting all the data from the collection student infos. And then method will execute if everything has happened correctly and then we are receiving this access method is receiving the response back. So here you will have a callback function and the argument for this callback function will be the response from the API. Okay, so let me call it uh, response. Now in this function block, I will use my use state function to fill all the data that I have received from the API which is an array of student objects. So I will use this method to fill that data in this array. So for this, I will use this function. I can copy from here. And what is the, what value I want to fill? So the response or the result that I got from the API, right? So API is sending back the result in the variable result. So how to get the result from the response? So we have to write response because here I am the argument here I give the name response. So write here response dot then we are getting some data from that data. We are focused only about the result that the API is sending. So this will provide us the response. So after executing this command our list of students. Okay, this will be an array and it will have all the data that has been sent by the get API. And then our next job is just to display that data in our return element, right? Okay, now in the axios.get, the catch method will be used to catch any error. So if there is any error, okay, because of which the data could not be returned, so this catch function has a callback function and the argument is the error. So whatever you want to write, ERR or ERROR, whatever you want to write, so it will have the error. And you can just display that error using the console log, maybe console log and just display the error. So whatever the reason because of which the data could not be returned, it will display here. Okay, so it is done automatically by the by the by the software. We don't have to specify the reason. Okay, so now this use effect is done, right? Right now, the all data returned by the get API is available in the use state array list of students. So now our job is just to display this data in the return element below this heading. So now our job is to get the data from this array list of students and display it in a tabular format in the return function. So I will start by creating a table. Inside the table, my first row will be the uh, table heading. So I would like to display the student ID, student name, email, password, department. So you can see the table heading here. So let me apply the bootstrap class on this table. So class name equal to table. Let's say table type. This gives some proper spacing in the column headings. Okay, after I give this column heading, my next job is to display the other elements of this array, create row for every element in the list of students array. So I have to write my JavaScript code inside this return. So I will use curly braces and I will use the map method of the arrays. So name of my array is list of student dot map. So Inside this, the callback function, the argument, you can give it name student because the map function provide the student object to student one by one. So I give it name student because it will contain data of student every time the record is fetched from the array. So student, then I have arrow operator. Okay, and then I will put the parenthesis inside the parenthesis. I will write create my row tr inside the tr i will have table data and in the first column since my first column heading is student id so here i will display student id so student because first time when the map function executes the data of the first student is given to 
the object student so if i write student dot student id this will display the student id so first time the student id of the first student next time the student id of the second student and so on so if you can see here the student id of the first student is displayed here and we have only one record so only one record is id of first student is shown here right so if i add let's say if i add some more uh, data let's say t47 and it's now i add data for mangesh mangesh and let's say business department okay i submit this data now i come to manage student so you can see here we are displaying the student id of the first first student object and then the second object so like this i will display the other information also so td again this is javascript uh, content so inside curly braces so student dot student name so if i save it let me so you can see now the student name also displaying from the records so like this i will display all the data student dot email student dot password student dot department so i will save the file and i click here again manage student let me refresh so you can see here the data is being displayed here let me add some more data let's say t48 uh, let's say rex rex at the rate utas dot edu dot om department engineering so let me submit this new data and let me view my student data here manage student so you can see here now this data also added and it is being displayed here so so you have do, done two components the first component was used to insert data into the mongodb collection and this component fetches data from the collection and displays it here thank you